partners have a long history of engagement in the region and there are ups and downs, there are opportunities and challenges have unfolded throughout the years. Um, but at the moment, of course, a lot of the attention has been given to China's most recent Belt and Road Initiative. And the more important thing is just uh, about how this Belt and Road Initiative can actually be complementary to the, um, the, the, the long existing ASEAN connectivity program. This is the one opportunity, I think, that we can um, um, use, in a sense, to promote greater and better uh, ASEAN connectivity plan. But unfortunately, of course, we are still faced with the uh, challenges where um, not much have been discussed, no, not enough have been discussed about this ASEAN connectivity and how that could sort of like, you know, be part of the Belt and Road Initiative as well. Um, of course, uh, we still have time, I guess, then, and some of the uh, some of the um, initiative that was proposed between ASEAN uh, leaders and also China is um, the fact that they're planning to upgrade their partnership and, and they're in the process of formulating the ASEAN-China strategic partnership vision 2030. It's in on the work, so it would be great if this process will also involve um, civil society elements and other think tanks so that they can give sort of like more rich um, substance to the documents in the future. And another thing that I want to raise is the, um, the reality that we are facing now, which is the trade war between the US and um, China. This definitely have brought like um, not favorable impact to the region. If anything, uh, ASEAN export have went downhill because of the trade war. And there are a lot of um, opportunities that was lost because of this conflict. Um, among the discussion that we have in Holland Center, the one thing that um, strikes me is that the U.S. actually have a, a, a role here that can sort of uh, be a positive force as well and complementary to what the initiative, the Belt and Road Initiative, has 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 you know uh, as as it unfolds. So we need more effort to find ways um, on how the U.S. and China can. Uh, work together um, instead of creating a more intense uh, conflict or uh, 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 competitions in the region because th that's exactly what we need. We don't want uh, the, the, the major powers to uh, use this area as a backyard for their conflict but to have cooperations together for the short term and also for the longer term. There are examples where uh, our Chinese counterparts are actually learning a lot from the American counterparts and practices in the past. And I think there are, uh, I, I genuinely believe that there are desires among the Chinese to work together with the, uh, their American counterparts more so than just a simple competition. So um, that's why I am actually more optimistic uh, for the prospect uh, because there are, I think, a lot more people who are willing to cooperate, uh, be that from China or from the United States, more so than those who like to hype up the conflict and the kind of like you know the, the the competition between the two nations. Mm -hmm.